Good morning, folks. Big earthquakes in Oceania, big weather across the planet, and top stories on how the sun controls this planet. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were quiet, calm, no sunspots, just the southern coronal hole, large, trans-equatorial, and magnetically connected to Earth. Its solar wind won't arrive for another day or two. Right now, the stream is calming and geomagnetic conditions are quiet. Had a flurry of big quakes strike between New Zealand and Tonga, as I mentioned, starting with a transition zone blood echo way south of Fiji, then a six-pointer in Tonga, a 7.2 in Kermadec, and a large aftershock earlier this morning. Luckily, all out of damaging range in the ocean and deep. India has not seen proper monsoon, but between wind-driven dust storms and lightning, they are experiencing a different brand of brutal spring. Meanwhile in Brazil, the rain did come down, and came and came and came. Hours after the rescues and landslides began, they were still scrambling as it was still raining. Tornado dropped out of the system in the U.S. last night. Tonight's stronger alerts should be south of those I states and down into Texas. Let's go out with Hubble for an aesthetic piece before we grind out some science. A spiral galaxy brimming with nova events. No x-rays in this one. Hubble doesn't have that camera. Just visible UV and IR. So about a week ago, we looked at nine new papers on the space weather cardiac connection. Disruption of the electricity in the heart. But across many other fields of medicine, the statistics are just as good. And in some cases, the mechanism of action is perfectly understood. Today, we report a confirmation of the cognitive diminution resultant from proton and heavy ion exposure due to cosmic rays. We've seen cell inflammation, reduced cell division, and ionic disruption of the locus ceruleus, all tied to similar radiation, and in this case, they did not even apply what they recognize and admit would be the heaviest ions expected in space travel. So everyone will recall our academic battle with Dr. Lingham at Harvard over the biosphere risk of magnetic events. Hopefully we also recall the argument was ended by a paper in the world's number one geophysics journal, and it takes the side of danger. That magnetic excursions and reversals do present a risk to the biosphere, and the Italian co-author Vigliotti was kind enough to post it for free if you would like to dive deeper on the winning stamp of the argument. Okay, well how about the non-blot echo type of pre-earthquake signal? Those in the atmosphere. Pressure and outgoing long wave radiation. Finding a correlation never surprises me and always helps to solidify the electroquake field of science. Pressure is global electric circuit. OLR is thermal radiation release. And then, of course, there is the magnetic side of it as well. The studies on geomagnetic field changes before the 2011 Great Japan Earthquake are now very detailed. The ions and magnetic fields are how modern earthquake forecasting was born really just in the last few years. For more on that and all of the most important topics we cover here, check out the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. Tons of free videos and your insertion into the top level awareness in about one sitting. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.